this is the one out of all the midfielders that I keep going backwards and forwards Same. to. Uh, because um, I uh, watch him in some games where he's like going around players like they're not even there. I know. But this is a team game, you know. It's not just about him. It's about helping out with the defence and, and all that type of thing. So he's one of those players that have got ability to absolutely burn. But he doesn't do enough for the team. So welcome back to Small Heath Alliance FC. And as part of this mini-series, so to speak, we've just released a video about our defenders and goalkeepers. And in this video, we're going to be talking about our midfielders. And in particular, our own opinions on whether we think midfielders will be here or not be at the club uh, next season. And we are assuming that we're going to be in the championship next year. And me and Dad have not uh, spoken about our opinions or our thoughts on this before recording. So this is going to be a really interesting one. So, Dad, let's get straight into it. And the first player on my list, which we're going to discuss, is Ivan Sunjic. Yeah, uh, he's a good player to start with, isn't he? Um, I think a lot of players thought his time was done at Birmingham City when he went out on loan. And uh, when he came back, he started really, really well this season under John Eustace. And I think a lot better than people expected. In fact, I remember sitting there thinking, what's happened to him? Is that the same player? And he's done very well. Actually, all the managers we've had this season, they've all seemed to like him and they all seem to want to play him. Uh, but his contract is up. And uh, I presume because of the length of the contract he had and the time he came in, he would be on decent wages. So um, the decision is, do we keep him? I think probably not, if I'm honest. I, he's one of those players that you could easily make an argument to keep based upon this year's yeah. performance, this season's performance. But I think with the way the club are going and the way and type of football that they want to play, my gut feeling is that he won't be here. Uh, like him as a player, but in my opinion, I think that we won't yeah. see him here next season. I think I'll be a bit more brutal than you, know, and I'll say definitely not. Mm. Um, I, I, I mean, do you know that we brought him for €7 million? Euro. yeah. That's a lot of money, isn't yeah. it? Um, and for me, you know, there's no doubt about it. He's a workhorse. He puts the shift in, but he's not that much of an intelligent player. So when he does run off and goes on one of these, he leaves us really vulnerable in certain pockets of the pitch. And I think yeah. we've been caught quite a lot from Sunjic going on a rampage, forgetting about the pockets behind him, and, and we've been caught out. Um, and also, this might sound a bit silly. I don't mean it to, but Sunjic kind of represents the old team to me. He represents the old ownership that. A spell we had where we brought all those players in on mad wages and, and, and all those yeah, different yeah. things. So I think he's high paid, he's out of contract and for me, he did have a good start to the season, he's tailed yeah. off a little bit, he makes us too vulnerable and I think he'll definitely be up in the summer. Yeah, I think we both agree that uh, and I think that um, you know he's one of those players that I think he's made a good case for uh, getting himself a contract somewhere else um, so he's done himself a lot of favours this season. Uh, and that brings us on to the next player, which is a, a player that uh, we always have plenty to say about. That's Janino Bakuna. So what do you think about him? You know, on this podcast, I feel like we've given him a little bit of a hard time at times in terms of his possibly decision making or maybe we feel like he holds on to the ball a bit too much. He's actually becoming one of my favourite players. I actually really like Janino Bakuna. Um, he is he definitely makes a difference when he comes on. I think we definitely feel his creativity when he yeah. comes in. I think he's possibly on parallel with JJ for possibly our most valuable player. I think he's worth about £5 million. So he's definitely um, a lot of money there if we did want to sell him on. Um, I think he's still in contract for for a few more years. So there's no worry of him next being... Year. He's next until year. To, uh, June 25, we've got um, until. So there's no worry of him uh, contract uh, this summer. Um, but I like him. He's a good player. Um, I think if he could up his decision making in the final third, you know, uh, we've discussed several times he's took shots and he's tried to take on one too many men instead of playing uh, Stansfield in or, or whatever it might be. I think if he can cut those out, he'd be a top, top championship player. So for me, green tick for Bakun. I think he's a good player and, 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 and I would like to see him next season. Yeah, well, I'll make this short and sweet. He's frustrated the life out of me. I don't think we've been hard on him, you know. I think we've just been honest and I think a lot of the opinions that we've been given will be backed up by Blues fans when they see the frustration of some of the things he does wrong. But you can't discount all the good forward play he does. He's clearly got ability. Uh, I think he's a definite keep I do. We've got him for another year. Let's uh, let's keep him. Yeah, absolutely. So that's we both agree on that. Then. Absolutely. And that brings us on to another big talking point, and that's JJ. So uh, what do you think of Jordan James? He's he's done very well. You know, he's. I think this, this season, you would argue, is probably his breakthrough season in as much as he's been consistently chosen this season. He has played for us in previous seasons, but not as much as he has here. He's uh, obviously established himself now as a Welsh international. Yep. And he's, he's generated a lot of interest from clubs. I mean, I think I read that some at Tottenham or somebody was looking at him. Yeah. Uh, Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace. And, yeah. um, you I, know... I, I was 
him in 10 million. Yeah, but that's that, and that, and that's really what comes on to my point, whether we keep him or not. I think I'd like to keep him, but if we're offered a, a an appropriate and fair amount of money, and I think I'd be looking at probably about 15 yeah. plus million, to, then I think maybe we should consider that. But if you ask me brutally honest, do I want to keep him? My answer would be yes, let's keep yeah. him because he's one of our players that we've developed and you can yeah. see he's got a lot more potential, a lot more to come from him. I think when you look at his age, he's a Welsh international. Um, I totally agree, by the way. The last year and the year before, I used to get really frustrated with JJ, but he's come on leaps and bounds. He's like a completely different player this year, isn't he? Um, but he's a really interesting one. I mean, he's not perfect. Um, and I've noticed sometimes with JJ, I cannot stand it when he, when he plays on the wing. He's a central midfielder. Yeah, they're um, playing out of position. I do not play him on the wing. I don't, I don't think it works personally. He's a good passer of the ball. He scored some really valuable goals for us this season. You know, he can score from outside the box, JJ. Yeah. Um, he's a good player, but he can go invisible in games. Yeah. Um, he's a bit like Miyashi. You know, you f sometimes forget he's even on the pitch. You know, what's he, what's he doing? He has those moments where he's a bit yeah. ineffective in his movements. Sort of. However, um, caveat in that, good player. Um, I think if we were to get in the region, as you say, that 15 plus million, the club would have to make a serious decision on whether to sell him or not. I'm with you. I'd like to see him next season. Keep that talent growing and uh, keep it, keep, keep him pushing. He's a good player. I think the if he's going to be sold, it will be this summer. And I'll tell you why, because he's only got one year left on his contract. So if they leave him and don't sell him, keep him in the squad, then his value is diminishing significantly exactly. as, he, as his contract runs down. Yep. So the club have got a decision to make there with him. I would like to see, see him stay. I think you just said you would yep. as well. Um, so we'll see what happens with him. He's a good yep. player. Um, and this is another interesting. They're all interesting, aren't they? But this is uh, George Hall. What, what do you think uh, about him? So I, I really like George Hall, um, and he's just signed a new contract to twenty twenty six. So we've got him for an additional three years. Homegrown talent. Um, I think he's very good going forward. He's been very unfortunate with his injuries, unfortunately. And we at this season, especially, we seem to have a reputation, don't we, down at Blues? A player's made of glass. Um, a lot of our big players seem to go in the injury room this uh, this season. However, George Hall, good player. I like him going forward. And I always remember that one moment. I didn't know much about him, and it was Burnley at home last year. Burnley had just gone one nil up, and he, and then we were on the break, and he went gunning up the right hand side, a beautiful cross to Hogan for an equaliser against Burnley. And that's kind of cemented in my mind as a George, a big George Hall memory. But good player, like to see him stay. And I think in the next couple of years he could become a big a big championship player, and we could probably get a big value for him. I think so. Um, he has been unlucky with injuries. He had a, I think it was his hamstring, but then he got fit and then he did his hamstring. He's other hamstring, I believe. So it's it's not the same injury. It's the other leg, but it's still a hamstring problem. That's really stifled him this year as well. And also as well, last summer, I believe that Leeds United offered something like five million for him uh, because obviously they wanted him as well. So he's a good young player, yeah. but again, still a player that liked... He needs more first team yeah, football. Definitely, but he's definitely got the ability. Yeah. So I think we'll keep him, and I hope we do as well. I think I think there was a couple of clubs uh, sniffing around uh, George Hall, and I remember Troy Deeney coming out um, saying well, for what his uh, opinions worth, um, saying that he's George Hall's one of the best um, young players yeah. at Birmingham City. So did, he's definitely got the reputation. He's, he's building that rep. Um, so I'd like to get have him more minutes, more time on the pitch, and see what he develops into. Yeah. Um, so that brings on to we, we, we could say this for every player, another interesting one, yeah. uh, Andre Dazal. Yeah, I obviously we've got him on loan, so he will go back to his parent club, Queens Park Rangers, in the summer, un unless we choose to try and pursue that. And boy, now um, he's, he really is an interesting one for me because obviously he suits Tony Mowbray's style of football as a forward-thinking midfield player. Um, and when we did the loan video uh, about I don't know, maybe about a couple of months ago now, uh, he'd only just joined us, so we couldn't really give much of an opinion. So we've had a bit more of an opportunity to see um, Andre Dazel. Um, and this might be controversial. Uh, now that I've seen him, I don't think we should sign him. Okay. Uh, and I, I, I'm not saying he's not a good player and progressive, but I just think from what I've seen um, in the matches that I've watched, I think he, he does give the ball away a fair bit and he do, does make poor decisions. Not not disputing the fact that he does have some good forward play, yeah. but I, I'm not sure whether he is the type of player that is going to suit the style of well it will, it will suit the style with Tony Mowbray as manager yeah. but whether or not he's the, the, the level of quality that we want yeah. but I I, it, I know it, that I may be wrong here because I know that Tony Mowbray loves him he's been pursuing him for a long long time yeah. but I'm only basically giving my honest opinion on what I see and in yeah. my opinion I think that he has been decent but he hasn't been outstanding and I think there'd be better players out there that we could potentially pursue yeah. uh, in that position. I think he's a good player. Yeah. Um, you know what? I think if if Tony Mowbray comes back, and I hope he really, I hope he does, there's rumours out there he, he might end, end up retiring. But if, if Tony Mowbray comes back and it's his team, I actually think Dazal could be our first transfer of the summer season. Yeah. Um, and I would I would sign him if it's two million or below. 
I, I wouldn't want to break that threshold. Maybe even one million in, 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 in and around that field. I don't know what his market value is worth. I don't know what QPR would, would, would be willing to let him go for. Yeah, I think we've also got a lot of midfielders as well. So um, and a lot of them that will be potentially staying. So you know, there's lots of um, not not huge amounts of opportunity in that particular area. I don't think that's the most urgent area that we need to recruit to. So in my opinion, yeah. you know, and I know True. this might sound harsh to some Blues fans, but I'm only looking at what I've seen uh, watching him, and I just don't think that. Yeah, I'm not saying he's a bad player. He's just not, I believe, at the level that we'd want him to be to progress his club forward. Um, let's move on to the next one then, and that's Paik. Paik, uh, yeah, he came um, in January at the same time. Uh, we've got him till 2026, so he's under contract to us for a couple of years now. Uh, I like what I've seen so far, if I'm honest. I, think, I don't think by any means we've seen the best of him. No, I think there's so much more to come from him, so much potential in him. Uh, he's obviously got a... I mean, that one shot he took against Watford, I mean, <laughs> I know it was over the bar, but the pace, it was like he was hit by a All our shots were over the bar. Uh, yeah, but, 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 but it wasn't that far over the bar. Yeah, but yeah, it, was, it was a yeah, real... Yeah, it was a rocket. And also as well, I like, I like you know, he, he tries to sort of keep the play moving forward and yes. move around. So so just to make this short and sweet, yeah. I'll definitely keep him. 100%. Yeah. I, I genuinely don't have much to add apart from I love the fact he... Because I remember in, in Tony Mowbray's first game, he was so frustrated with his hoosh, horseshoe in it back around the back yeah. line. And he doesn't do that. He's always looking forward. And yeah. I love that. And I, I, I'm really enjoying what I'm seeing from Peck. He's had a couple of moments of sloppy passing. Oh, yeah. You know, he, the he, sold, he, sold, he sold Mark Roberts short. He did. Yeah, he yeah. did. Um, you know, but, you know, all, all these players are making mistakes yeah. in a minute. So we can't pin everything on, on him. But he is generally a pretty good passer of the ball, actually. And he does want to go forward 100% keeper. I like him. I really admin. like him. Admin. I think he's, he's got so much potential. So I yeah. think he's definitely a keeper. Yeah. Uh, next uh, one's an interesting one. Again, another interesting one. But this is one particularly interesting because I, I think we probably argue that we don't know huge amount about this player but in terms of what we see on the pitch and that's Alfie Chang yeah he's 21 mm. so he's still technically a youngster but me and you had this debate and back and forth in, in the um, in the defenders video and we were saying if you hit the 21 22 year threshold you know we did use Bellingham which is a bit of an unfair example sort of that 16 17 18 but you're kind of a star in your late teens, aren't you? Uh, yeah, so, yeah. so when you hit 21 you have kind of not shown everything you've got but you are not going to be at, at that level elite level that the Bellingham's not going to be at. Yeah. But I think um, he seems like, from what I've seen, he seems like an okay player. But again, he had a really unfortunate knocking training. It was actually with George Hall. Uh, George Hall went in for a challenge. It was a complete accident, um, but he's done a really serious knee injury. So we're not going to actually see him again until next uh, next season. But I would like to see him at the club in terms of club contract, but I think maybe loan him out next season to get some minutes on the yeah, board. Totally agree. That's exactly what I've written down. Yeah. Uh, I think as well, I think the club think a lot of him because he's obviously been injured a lot. But you hear good things about him and they seem to want to be able to keep and develop him. So I think the natural thing would be to send him out on loan, get him some regular first-team football, develop him as a player and then see where we go from there. Yeah. Um, so next, Gary Gardner. So Gary Gardner is another one who's going to be out of contract in the summer. Yeah. And for me personally, I, I don't rate him at all. Um, if I'm honest, whenever I see Gary Gardner come off at the bench, it, <laughs> it doesn't put me in a bad mood, but I always think, oh, why is, why is Gary Gardner on? I mean, thank you for the free kick against West Brom. That was a great moment. Yeah, good goal. Um, it was yeah, a good goal. Yeah, yeah. But for me, Gary Gardner, uh, he's definitely got to be gone in the summer. Yeah, I think most Blues fans will agree with that. You know, he's uh, he's 31 now. He's out of contract. Um He's, he won't be there next season, and no. I think there's not much more to say really. No, I, mean, about that. I think if we stay in the championship, we're going to be building up to bigger and better things. And Gary Gardner, for me, does not fit that vision of a bigger and better team. No, not, not for the future, no. No, no. A good, good player in his day, but I think we've, we've yeah. never seen the best of him at Birmingham no. City. And again, a lot of that's been because of injuries yeah. as well, to be fair. But so, uh, yeah. Absolutely. And then that brings us on to, uh, I think, a bit of a Marmite one for you, but uh, that is Miyoshi. Yeah, I, I, he's a bit. To me, he's a little bit like Bakuno in terms of you know just by look at him, he has clearly got lots of ability. But I think what lets him down for me is, uh, firstly, sometimes I think he's um, he's not physical. You know, he pushed off the ball. He's only a small player anyway. Yeah. But he's pushed off the ball too easy. But his decision making sometimes is uh, is not good. But you can't argue with his stats. You know, he's one of our highest um, assist. Uh, 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 players uh, and he does score goals as well uh, we've contracted he's contracted to us until 2025 so he's got another year um, I think it's a no-brainer you know I, I, I know that you say he's a Marmite player and I do tell you that and I do express mm. my frustrations about him but he's a really good player and yeah. that's that's the basis of why we should definitely keep yeah. him I think he's possibly been our most consistent attacking based player um, just over the course of the season so far like he has put in a couple of really good performances um, he, he does create chances but for me same criticisms as you 
Sometimes decision making in the final third, like the, like all of our attacking players, and for me it's the lightweight thing. He gets shugged off the ball a little bit too easy for me. And when he when he's in a physical game against a big team, he can be really invisible because he's like he, he finds it hard to get yeah. into the game because the, you know for, as you say, championships are very physical league, isn't it? If you've got if you're a little bit of a lightweight player, it's easy to get shrugged off the ball and be made invisible in games. Yeah. However, really good player, really like him. Um, subtle brag by the way Blues fans I am a photographer and I have met Miyoshi and he's an absolutely cracking bloke really nice bloke very friendly very uh, very kind I've got a lot of time for you so um, for me Miyoshi 100% staying just, I really like him just one final point for me on him yep. I think he's a victim to the, the, the disconnection between the midfield and Stansfield and the forward because I think uh, a lot of times we've seen him you know he's in his brain he's basically playing a w- wonderful pass but it's to nobody yeah. so we're getting basically he's backing up this issue with, like, like Bakuna he's got to improve his decision making mm. but there's definitely but, a really really good player there and I definitely think we should keep him next Just season. one final point I think if we go forward in bigger numbers people like Bakuna and Miyashi will start to be in the game more because they have more options I yeah. think that they get frustrated and, and they look worse because they've got no other outlet but yeah the perfectly valid point you know there is some sloppiness there and they do give the ball away from time to time Okay so next we come on to Alex Pritchard yeah, so Pritchard is an interesting one. <laughs> We're going to say that for all of them, aren't we, yeah, until the end of the video. Um, I like him. I like his aggression. I like his passion. You know, me and you have spoken on previous videos, Dad. There might be a captain in there, didn't we? Uh, because he seems to be that kind of player who does grab the game. He does rally the players around. And when I saw him against West Brom in his first game, he was shouting at the players. And uh, he came on against Hull for that brilliant assist for Yuki. And he was, sh- again, shouting at the players. I like players like that. I like yeah. players who wear their heart on their sleeve and get amongst it. Um, you know, definitely, arguably at fault for that goal against uh, Mid- was it Middlesbrough, the Middlesbrough yes. game. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Um, he sort of dwindled on it for a little bit too long. But again, do we come back to options up, up in the attacking part of the field? Um, but I like him. I would like to see him stay. I'd like to see more of him next season. And I think if Mobe's at the wheel, he fits into his vision as well. So for me, yeah, I mean, possibly haven't seen enough of him uh, 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 in terms of just over the course of since he's been here. But from what I have seen, I like him and I would like to see him stay. Yeah, he's settling into a new team. Us, uh, you know, he's uh, contracted to us until uh, 2026, so we've got him for a couple of years. Uh, I agree with you as well. We haven't seen enough of him because he's been disrupted by injuries. And uh, what I've seen, I've seen little cameo performances. I mean, the goal that he set up for Jukovic against Holt for the equaliser, where we just Mm. that ball in oh, yeah, that was, that was calculated actually, past that it, was. it was actually you know that, that was real quality and shows a player that uh, sort of knows what he's trying to do and actually sort of tries to execute it but I've also been disappointed with what I've seen as well if I'm honest in so yeah. far in terms of the mistakes that he's made but he is a player that's coming into a brand new team so I think you give him a good pre-season yeah. I think he's going to be really important for us next season, I do. Yeah. And uh, I definitely, well, I don't think there's any question that we'll keep him, yeah. but I, I want to keep him and I think that he will develop yeah. into, uh, for us, a really, really key player. I think I really like him because it's a wolf gone into a pack of sheep and he, and it really stands out that he's one of the players that will grab it. And by the way, I don't mean that disrespectfully, but I think a lot of Blues fans will agree a lot of our players are pretty passive. Um, and he's gone in there, aggression, shouting, and I like that. And for me, that, that, that that's a big green tick. Uh, but I'm sure with the recruitment in the summer, we're going to get more taller, physical, commanding players. I'm yeah. absolutely certain of it. But for me, at the moment, Pritchard's ticking those boxes, so I'm happy with Pritchard. Yeah. Um, okay, so that brings us on to our next one, and that's Keshi Anderson. Yeah, he's a player that uh, has now gone out of favour. Um, did very well at the start of the season, particularly under Eustace, and worked really hard over the summer to get a contract as well because he was a free agent. And, he, was. Uh, he was on trial. He was on trial, and uh, he you know, and everything you read about the fact that he really earned his contract. And he actually started really well under Eustace, to be honest. He, probably one of our key players. Really surprised me. I thought, well, how's he a free agent if he's that good? But I think over the season, particularly uh, Rooney's come in and all this changing in managers really have really affected him. Uh, and he's literally just now disintegrated into not even being in yeah. the in the uh, team. Um, I He's contracted till the end of this season as well, so he will go in the summer as well. I don't think we'll renew his contract. So, you know, he, he I believe, will not be there um, at the start of next season. I literally can't say anything that you haven't covered. Mm, yeah. Um the one thing I will say is actually when the season did start, he was one of my favourite players under Eustace. You know, those first couple yeah. of games, he was yeah. really good going forward. Then he got well, then he went off the boil, then he got injured. And yeah, everything you've said, I agree with. So I don't think we'll be renewing his contract uh, for the following season. Yeah, I, I t- totally think that's, um, that's what's going to happen. And then we come on to Sriki Dembele. <laughs> so this is, a for me, this is a really interesting one because I have a love-hate with Sriki Dembele. Like most, uh, excuse me, but, like most Blues fans. Like most Blues fans. But I, I really like flair players. I, I, I like Bakuna, I like Dembele. 
Miyoshi, I guess, would could be classed as a kind of a flair player as well to an extent. But um, Dembele is so frustrating because he has ability. When he's on his game, he's probably our most dangerous player. You know, when he's good, in, when he's good in at players, he's going down the wing. He cuts in. Um, you know, he, he scored a couple of goals this season. The great one against Huddersfield. He scored a couple against Blackburn at Ewood Park. You know, really dangerous player on his game. But he doesn't track back very well. He gives the ball away and we've lost so many goals or conceded so many goals from him losing the ball in the final third and then being caught on the are caught on the counter and they end up scoring. So lots of positives and negatives. You know, on his day he can change a game. On his on a low day he can he can lose his the game. Um but for me, I'm not too if you've got his contract details, I'm not too sure of his contract. Yeah, he's contracted until twenty twenty six so okay. a couple of years. So he's got a couple of years left. So I think, uh, and I heard a story, I don't know how true this is, I think it might have been you, and I think it was in the press, that when he, when Mowbray started at Birmingham, um, he said to Dembele, you know, you've got to track back or something. And Dembele said something like, oh, no, I'm saving my energy for the attacking part of the game. And, and Mowbray said, no, 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 that's not going to fly with me as manager. Mm-hmm. You need to start doing the tracking back. So maybe if they can do some work with him on the training field about the tracking back, about the defensive part, maybe he can strengthen his game. I don't know what his market value is. Maybe we, may, we might sell him in the summer. Uh, I'm not too sure. But for me, when all said and done, as a player off the bench sometimes to, to, to make a change, I think a green tick. I, I think I'd keep Suiki Dembele. This is the one out of all the midfielders that I keep going backwards and forwards Same. to. Uh, because um, I uh, watch him in some games where he's like going around players like they're not even there. I know. But... This is a team game, you know, it's not just about him. It's about helping out with the defence and, and all that type of thing. So he's one of those players that have got ability to absolutely burn. But he doesn't do enough for the team. And Agreed. my conclusion is that we should sell him. Okay. That's what Fair I enough. think. That's what I think. I, I, I feel partly with a, with a heavy heart saying that because I do like his style of player. Mm-hmm. I like the ones that can do that. If they can make things happen, they can change games. But also, if they are not putting the work and effort in, they're nullifying everything by uh, the team conceding goals. Mm-hmm. And as but frustrating, you could, argue, as, you could argue that for a lot of our attacking players. With yeah, it, but, but him, him in particular, him yeah, in particular, yeah. he stood out for me as that type of player that I've watched with. Wow, that's amazing! And then suddenly, well, why aren't you tracking back? What you know? So, so uh, as much as I do say this with a heavy heart, and uh, he's been a real dilemma for me um, whether I think we should sell him. But I think we should sell him, yeah. and uh, you know, maybe uh, get some more team type of players yeah. if they could work with him on the training ground and, and instill that sense of team instill that sense of tracking back and defence I think there's a player there it, it's just and it depends what we would get for him as well um, but if it frees up salary and it frees, frees up FFP sorry uh, to get another player in I mean I'm not totally against it if Sariki Dembele was to go tomorrow I wouldn't lose any sleep over it um, but I do think he's a dangerous player to have in your team especially when he's firing oh, he's so very dangerous it, 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 I'm, I'm exactly the same as you by the way I really um denied over this one but for me I'm, I'm going to say keep him and hope that a manager can sort of work his magic a little bit because I yeah, think sure. uh, if we if we move forward with this progressive style of play that uh, Mowbray Tony Mowbray wants to play then I think that isn't going to suit him. Mm. If we were to go back to a more defensive style like we saw under Eustace and we're likely to see under Rabbit for the last few eight games, then I think he could be a brilliant player for us. But I don't think the club is moving in that direction mm. anymore. Yeah, yeah. That's why I think we should sell him. That's interesting. So you think he's a better player on the back foot with the team naturally on the back foot? Yeah, because he's got the security of the defence behind. So if he does make a mistake, there's more of a barrier yeah, behind him. Yeah, good point. But also, he's, he's the type of player in that system that can unlock a team as well. Absolutely. So if he, if he was a Eustace Rowett type of manager that we were moving forward, I'd say keep him. Mm. But not in the way that the club are progressing and definitely under Mowbray. So in my opinion, with uh, Tony Mowbray in charge, I think we should sell yeah. him. Interesting. Mm. Okay. Mm. So for me, I've got one final one on the list mm. and that comes down to Ramel Donovan. Yeah, he's he was a, a, a real um, sort of big, sort of the big sort of, uh, you know, new player to come out of the youth team under Rooney. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, I think we expected too much of him too soon. He did all right, you know, and he was running around, buzzing around like, a, you know, a little bee. And he did really, really well. He's obviously clearly another player that is for the future, but I don't think for right now. Keep him. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, definitely don't sell him. I think he could be potentially, when he starts to sort of, as we said, you know, sort of increase. Fill out a bit. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, and to get a bit more experience, he's the type of player that I think yeah. could be, you know, a real big one for the future. So in my opinion, keep him possibly send him out on loan mm-hmm. and get him some first team experience, possibly League One, League Two. Yeah. And uh, But def, def, yeah, for me, definitely keep him. 
one this is no doubt in my mind one million mm-hmm. percent keep you yeah. have to keep your homegrown talent you have yeah. to keep the, the players you're uh, progressing in the academy and blues have a knack don't we of producing really good talent in our academy and he's one of them um he's absolutely brilliant and he scores loads of goals at the level he's at he's just a little bit lightweight to make it up to the full-time championship and we saw that with Rooney didn't he because he gave him a go off the bench Donovan came on and he changed the game he was brilliant energy yeah. and yeah. then he started him and he was completely ineffective he was getting knocked off the ball he was passing it out it was, a um, little bit awkward to watch because he looked like a kid amongst men, didn't it? And, yeah, yeah. and, and, and that's just because of his age. Yeah. But the talent, oh, he's absolutely outstanding. I saw a goal he scored in the under-21s last week or week before. He flicked it over someone's head and then lobbed it over the keeper with it from a tight angle. Absolutely fantastic. I saw that goal and as well. I, mean, I think he's going well, to be a brilliant well, player. Well, I think if this club wants to progress and really progress in a sustainable way, we have to keep hold of our homegrown players because they're, they're going to be the lifeblood of the club. They're going to be the players that are going to develop, that we are going to get large fees for, rather than having them hand-picked off by the top premiership teams to put them in their reserves and then they make the money on them mm-hmm. so we've got to encourage players like Romel, Romel Donovan yeah. so 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 definitely for me Romel Donovan is a definite no-brainer he has to be here next 100%. season so you've just heard our opinions on our midfielders at Birmingham City and what we think or who we think is going to be here or isn't going to be here uh, next season but we'd love to hear from you uh, please leave a comment in the section below about what your thoughts do you agree do you disagree do you have some thoughts uh, of your own and if you like this video don't forget to like the video uh, please follow us and subscribe to our channels on x and instagram with our handles popping up on the page now and you can find those in the description as well and please don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel so you don't miss any future content and me and dad will see you on the next video where we're going to be discussing our strikers